This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, miniatures and paints, discount prices at MiniatureMarket.com. Hello everybody, it's your old pal Rob. Today, oh today we are going to be looking at greatness. Greatness in my hands. And that is the second edition of Frostgrave by the brilliant Joseph McKellar. My God, can this guy not, can this guy do anything wrong? Can he do anything wrong? What you have here is the second edition and we're going to be taking a look at it a little bit. Uh, I wanna go down and show you a little bit how to put a war band together. Uh, go through the book a little bit, not too much. Uh, talk about just a, a few of the changes. There's, there's not major changes as much as everything's cleaned up so nicely. And then you're getting an additional 10 scenarios in here. Um, is this a must-have? I, I, I believe it is. There's just no, no ways around it. This is a must-have, especially if uh, it, it's from the great company of, of Osprey Games, of course. So anything they put out is glorious. So um, we're going to go down. We're going to take a look at the book. I want to take a look at some of the figures, and we'll go from there. Beautiful, beautiful book as always. Quality uh, through the roof from Osprey as always. We're going to just go through this. I don't want to ruin too many things, but I'm going to go through the book a little bit, and then we're going to bring some guys out here, and I, I'm going to talk about some of the things inside the book here, okay? So uh, one of the things that we want to do is just kind of go through and... Um, they basically also if you want to get figures go to North Star military figures okay pick these up uh, I, I picked up a bunch uh, and of course they are glorious uh, it, it, they are must-haves must-haves um, the first thing that it's going to do here and again I'm going to skip through a lot of things you're forward talking about how great this game of course is the art the color everything beautiful beautiful <laughs> I mean look at the painting jobs on those things uh, this is going to talk to uh, about wizards and war bands your main focus here is that you are a wizard okay and you are going to the city of Frostgrave and you are trying to to get as much magical loot as you possibly can out of this magical dead city um, and, and they're just all kinds of things. But you have competing war bands that are going to also go out there. Now, as you can see, I've got a couple different wizards here, okay? But you don't have to use their, their models. You can use any models. Like, uh, I don't mind using this guy here from, uh, this is from uh, Dungeon Saga. Uh, perfect, cool looking wizard. Why not bring him into the fold, right? Okay. So um, you're going to start with your wizard, and there are 10 different types of magic, okay? Uh, of, of magic that your wizard, wizard type, excuse me. Uh, chronomancer, elementalist, enchanter, illusionist, if you like to fake people out and stuff like that. Um, you have a ne necromancer, uh, soothsayer, summoners. You get the picture, right? Uh, underneath here, okay, um, and we're going to particularly point right here, uh, what you're aligned with so you, uh, aligned and plus two with a chronomancer an illusionist and a, uh, Yeah, I'm not even gonna try to say that you're neutral with other things, but you are opposed You can never take spells from opposed when you're putting together your wizard You are going to take three from your particular uh, three spells from your particular uh, wizardry type and then you are going to take a couple of others from anything that's aligned or neutral. So essentially you're gonna take five spells from five different uh, practices and there'll be penalties and stuff like that. Once you decide on your wizard, then you are going to start build assembling your warband. And the first person that you wanna get is your apprentice, okay? Uh, your apprentice is, um, he's the guy that's learning. Um, the only person that levels up is your wizard. So when your wizard levels up, guess what? Your apprentice levels up. All right. And then the soldiers. You're going to want people to do the dirty work. Okay. You're going to have a chance to get certain types of 
of uh, people that you're going to be able to hire on. Now, thugs and thieves are always free, okay? And just to go a little bit farther, and we'll explain this more when we get down to the table, that you're going to have 500 gold to to get everything. So you're going to get men, men of arms, apothecaries, infantry men. Uh, you can get some animals, warhounds. They're going to cost you a little bit. But you always want to have a certain number of thugs and thieves because, honestly, people are going to die in this. They're going to die. <laughs> Uh, on the other side here, uh, just to show you, uh, archers, crossbowmen, treasure hunters, trackers, knights, you can have these guys and they are going to come with certain amount of stats. So you're going to be able to get specialist soldier types, but as you can see, it's a high cost, but it'll pay off in the end. Uh, this just talks about all the different weapons and then setting up the table. Usually you can play this on a three by uh, three by three table, uh, four by four. Uh, some even say two by two. Uh, I, I think three by three is the sweet spot on on, on this phenomenal experience. Um, you're going to have initiatives. Everything is done with a D20. Everything is done with a D20. Now, those of you that have, have played this game, you're right now saying, okay, well, where's the real changes? There really isn't any big changes here. Um, your, your changes are going to come as we move on through here. Um, you're going to have certain actions that you, that you can take. Uh, you're going to have move actions. Um, um, uh, attack actions that you're going to take and there's a lot that goes into this this is something that you'll see when we play and we'll talk about but you're going to also see how this has I like to call it the blood bowl feel to it because you it, it, it has this role playing element to it and uh, what I always loved, loved about blood bowl is when we finally uh, got death zone and now all of a sudden our, 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 our teams meant something. Well, it's the same thing with the war bands here, okay? Uh, if they get wounded or knocked out and stuff like that, you're going to roll on a table to see if they're dead, badly wounded, if they recover, um, they can have a permanent injury um, that you're going to roll and it's going to cause them. And, and then you're going you're gonna to make some, this. hey, I lost my toes, smashed my leg, crushed my arm. It really gives this feel that if you start to really say, oh man, this guy's really jacked up and good, you want to kind of protect him because if you go headlong, that something can go bad and then all of a sudden that guy becomes worthless and then you have to start over again. Um, well, psychological scars, which is just glorious. <laughs> psychological stars then you're going to level up and there's different things that you're going to be doing as you as your wizard levels up so does your apprentice um you're going to have uh, gold, gold crowns are the the king of everything here you're going to be able to buy things and i'm going to just skip ahead again beautifully put together easily easily accessible if you haven't played this um you're really really missing out on something and I really really suggest that you pick this up when it comes out um, you're gonna have on in the back here and I really want to get back here okay um, there's gonna be a ton of different spells okay and they are going to coincide with whatever uh, school of magic that you decide to uh, play with you can raise zombies how cool is that if you're a necromancer you're going to raise the dead all right um and you're going to have these three spells and these spells are going you're going to help your war bands or you know be greedy and get the things that you need you so all these things do different things um the, the newer, this, there's not new spells in here as much as there are spells that have been tweaked and and jacked up. Not jacked up, but I want to say that um, a lot of them weren't played at a time. Now all of a sudden there's a bunch of different spells that are very interesting. That you go, oh, you know what? This might be good to take. I, didn't, I never wanted to take that before. How about if I take it now? Um... Uh, skipping ahead here, there are 20, now there are 20 um, uh, scenarios in the book. The original book had 10. 
uh, the neat thing about this is you have those same 10 that you had and they were more beginner type of scenarios okay and as you see we have 20 now but then there are 10 new ones in here that are more advanced that are going to help help you uh, do things that are more advanced and then and, and ugh, just phenomenal I started reading through the one that I liked was the Ma uh, the living mausoleum uh, I love that that one uh, but you know I think that's where we might start but there's all kinds of different things here treasure and experience and in the back here uh, you're going to get some of the things because you're going to run into things that are going to be creeping along in frost grave remember it's a very dangerous place so you're going to run into the giant giant rats ice spiders ice toads all kinds of things that you don't expect to run into um snow leopards white gorillas wild dogs wolves you know and use any type of um of use any type of figures that you can have or go to North Star and pick up the the they have some really really cool uh, figures out there for this okay uh, demons well, if you have a bunch of demons trust me uh, they will come into place no trolls werewolves uh, love it just love it uh, in the back here uh, yeah here we we're gonna have a bunch of um, that you can print out uh, these cards here that are going to be good for your new uh, for your um, For your spells and then in the very back here is something that I really wanted to show you guys Because it is actually crucial in, in a lot of ways uh, You're going to get uh, uh, You're going to get your sheets. You can print these out. Okay, and also you're, you're going to want to print this out too, okay? Uh, this is for your schools of magic, and you know what your plus and minuses are to it, okay? You're going to get your wizard's sheet, which is going to help you along. And then, of course, our spell cards. You're going to want to print in. I'm going to laminate all those, of course. Now, this is the, the key part, and I think this is where... This isn't a money grab by these people, okay? These people are doing the right thing. Um, the supplements. There are a ton of supplements. I have all the supplements. Thaw the Lich Lord is just awesome. Listen, this gives you... There are no notable changes in... Well, there are some uh, little changes here. And what they did is anything that you need to change, they tell you what to modify. But for the most part, everything that you've bought before, if you are a prior, a person that has played this game before, is already here. See, Forgotten Packs, uh, which I just happen to have here. So this is compatible. Everything here is compatible. The Wizard's Conclave. And then, of course, the, the thing that I was most excited about is that the solo and cooperative, the Perilous Dark, is fine. Okay? It, it, it doesn't change, which is music to my ears because this one is a lot of fun if you just want to play um, Frostgrave on your own. All right. So now... Uh, I want to show you a couple things and talk a little bit about some of these sheets that we saw in the back and how you put together your warband and how fighting works. So I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the stats here and I'm going to write on here so a little bit. So you're going to see stats like uh, you're going to see an M, you're going to see an F, you're going to see an S, an A, a W, an H and then you know of course you'll have your cost and uh, any notes as far as weapons that you have this is your move stat so uh, we're just gonna take a thug for instance and we're gonna say that he has a six he's plus two to fight okay he doesn't shoot so he gets a zero he has an armor of ten remember that number right there will of minus one and then health of 10. All right. Uh, and we're just going to call him a thug. Okay. Next, we're going to have, um, let's have, let's have a man of arms. Okay. Of at arms. Okay. We'll just put M.A. <laughs> 
Uh, he has a movement of six. He has a three. Now, plus three is, this is movement, this is fight, this is shoot. He has zero shoot. He has 12 armor, okay? And he's plus one will. And he has 12 for health, okay? So, we're going to take our man-at-arms, okay? And we're going to take our thug. And this guy looks like a thug, right? Right? Everything is ran off a D. 20 so these two are locked in combat the man at arms is going to attack the thug both are going to roll a d20 so our man at arms rolls an eight eight plus his fight okay is is 11 now we are going to have our thug he is going to roll he rolls a 14, quite shocking, plus two is 16. He has one combat, okay? So over here we have an 11 right now, and we have a 16 right here, okay? So because he's one combat, okay, there is a difference of five, okay? So now what we're going to do so now this stat goes away. It doesn't mean anything, okay? But what we're going to do is we are going to take the armor of 12 and we are going to subtract it by the 16, which is going to leave four, okay? So what he does is four damage to the, to, to the man of arms. How is this possible? He's been now knocked down to eight. Now, the thug has a decision here, okay? He doesn't have an attack, and and so forth and so on. And we know that the other wizard's going to get his turn, too. So he can either decide to push away, either moving back one inch himself, which would unlock them from combat, or uh, he can push this guy back, all right? But he decides, because he's brave, he's going to stay into combat. And now... Um, since they are continued in combat, it's now the man arms turn, more or less. And he rolls a one, which is horrible. Plus, plus three is four. Boy, good thing I'm not playing this right now, and I, I have the man arms. Okay, now the man arms cost money. It cost 75 gold, and this thug was for free. Thug is going to roll. He's going to roll 18 plus two is a 20. Okay. Uh, wow, that ain't good. So we are going to take that 20, and again, we are going to subtract it, which just happens to be perfect. We're going to subtract the 12 here, okay? And he only has 8 hit points. He's the, Our man of arms is going to take 8 hit points, and he's going to be knocked out completely. So you see how combat works. It's very simple, clean, and perfect. Now let's talk about putting together a war band, okay? You're going to want to select your wizard and your, your type of, like we had talked about earlier, you're going to want to talk, uh, uh, select a school of magic and your spells, okay? So we've selected this wizard. You have 500 gold pieces, okay? And I'm just going to write them here, all right? Our wizard always costs the 100, so that means he has... Um, a number of gold pieces that he's going to be able to spend to form his war band. Okay, he's going to get an apprentice. An apprentice um, is going to be. Oh, here we go. You're going to have an apprentice. Now, the neat thing about taking an apprentice is that whatever your skills are for your wizard. It's a minus two on a number of different skills, but it gives you an, a, a tactical advantage as in having another spellcaster. So you're going to take an apprentice. And as you level up, level up, so does your apprentice. So it's a really neat little thing. So say he has a plus four fight. Well, you're going to subtract two. That means he's going to have plus, uh, plus two fight instead. Then you have the choice of um, bringing in thugs, okay? And you're going to want to bring in thugs and thieves, basically, to work with you. Because what do they do best? 
Yeah, they thug and thieve. Okay, these are free. They're not going to cost you any money. Okay, so getting these type of guys are free and they're expendable. Okay, that's a great word there. Free, expendable, but they're not as powerful. So you're gonna wanna, you know, really decide on what you, what you know what type of guy that you have there. Okay, so you're you're gonna wanna take. Mm, probably four of those. Then you have a choice of infantrymen, okay, as we have here. They are going to cost you 50 gold. You can pick uh, men of men, men at arms, as you saw we, we slaughtered our men, men of arms, and you could take two of those. They're 75 each, okay. Remember you have you have a certain amount of gold okay that you can spend so right now you're at 250 300 okay and then you can probably take if you wanted to take an apothecary uh, or somebody like that let's just use him as an apothecary even though he's another wizard and he's another 75 he's 75 gold you also have specialized people like archers that are 75 crossbowmen that are 75 crossbowmen give you uh, um, bonuses and things like that trackers are a hundred treasure hundred are a hundred gold 125 if you decided to take a knight okay 125 for him so you can see where you're very quickly going to spend up your gold pieces putting your war band together and that's why these free guys really work and you you want to take 10 people with you and that's going to help you and what are you going to be doing well you are going to be going after treasure and and and, and all kinds of different types of You're gonna scenarios want to make and, and the best thing about this is you can make your own stuff like like here I there's a, a scenario for an orb so I decided to make uh, an orb but also I'm, I just wanted to tie this in with the lich lord and things like that uh, I'm still working on this, so it's it's not done. But you're also going to want to make treasure tokens, so uh, because you're going to be placing treasure tokens all over your two by two or three by three uh, things. There's going to be things that you're going to be running into that aren't like we talked about earlier. Skeletons, skeletons always seem to be there for some reason, and and you're going to be dealing and fighting with skeletons and wolves and. Uh, giant bats and liches and all these other things while competing against a rival war band so this game just has so much to it and it's just one of the best games out there I really suggest that you check out this book let's go up top and get my final thoughts now listen I'm going to tell you something this is again this makes it so easy to understand it's just such a simple but yet brilliant system with depth uh i like the spells um the feel of the game now in all honesty is instead of trying to maul each other it's more how much treasure can we get how much in this this unbelievable city can we get you know the magical properties that we want to, to help uh, make us more powerful and make our war band uh, even better and then dealing with all the different types of um, creatures and things that are just nasty in there and there's some nasty things in there believe me or believe me or not um, another good thing that that we saw was that it you know I have everything for this game and I was like oh god please don't tell me I, I, all that's irrelevant now because it, it's all glorious uh, no uh, if you have expansions for it like forgotten packs or or I like the solo experience of it uh, in the like we saw in the back of the book it tells you exactly what you need to do to make any kind of adjustments so everything is relevant it cleans everything up beautifully um, if you haven't played Frostgrave this is a phenomenal phenomenal jumping point this gets one of my highest grades ever um, this is just 
majestic, glorious, and Joseph McCullough is brilliant. And hats off, tip of the hat to, you know, like we like to do, we like to tip the hat every once in a while, uh, to Osprey Games. Uh, if you don't see some of the stuff that they are coming out with and are purchasing it, uh, shame on you because there is some phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal games that they put out uh, in book form here if you are a miniature player and you like to do something outside the box. This is phenomenal. I, I highly suggest you get it. Um, uh, you will not be disappointed. And when I tell you will not be disappointed, promise me on, uh, I promise you on this one. This is glorious. Uh, a plus, A plus, A plus. A, 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 a great revision to a great game. And there's no end. There's more coming, folks. There's more coming. Um, and I'm going to be right there with it. So I hope you enjoy this. Go check it out. You won't be disappointed. Go to Osprey Games and pick it up when it's available. Uh, you can also probably get it at Miniature Market. You never go wrong with Miniature Market. And um, I, again, phenomenal, phenomenal system. Until next time, it's your old pal Rob. The end we'll of the you. game, and you could get this from Miniature Market, right, Grandpa? <laughs> you could get this from Miniature Market. That's right. Yeah, everything you need. Bye.